here's our Oscar preview special. We're gonna we are going to share screen. Give me a minute. We're gonna share screen with all of the Oscar nominees. Alan and I are gonna go through all the categories. I have seen Alan. Have you seen all of the shorts? I've seen most of the shorts, not all of them. I've seen all the live action shorts. I have seen all of the animated shorts. I haven't seen the documentary shorts. Yeah, the okay. only uh, the only live action short I didn't see was Ivalu. But I've seen the others. Okay, let me share screen. We're going to go to Oscars.org. We were going to go through all the categories. So uh, here we go. Let's go to awards, Oscars. Uh, where are the nominees? <laughs> Normally I would have this ready. <laughs> But Gary, the neurotic nooner, went way late today. I was I literally moved my computer into the kitchen to make lunch. <laughs> so I will tell you the Oscar website uh is horribly organized. It's it's not great. Yeah, there we go. Okay, we're gonna start at the bottom and work our way up. Okay, can you see that? Should I zoom in? Yeah, uh yeah, make it zoom in. Better. Oh, there you go. Is that good? All right. Let me, uh, we're going to start writing. Here are predict. Can you see it okay? Uh, not really. No, no, if it's I... good. All, all, all of them can fit on one screen. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, and we'll we'll do a couple of categories. We'll go to the chat. We'll do a couple categories, go to the chat. And then April Wright is going to join us in about an hour. So it's going to be an hour of Oscar, uh, Oscar discussion here. And Alan, could I ask you a favor? Sure. Well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut and paste this, put it in the private chat. I need you to keep track of what our predictions are because you and I are going to make bets. Okay. Okay. So uh, private chat, here's the link to where I am. Go there. You can cut and paste, create a Google Doc. I want you to keep track. Just put like, you know, CG and AN next to like who our picks are. Okay. Okay. Or one, I just, yeah. uh, I'll just put down our picks for each category. Well, no, because then we can see. Just put, you just list it. Just, just uh, cut and paste this. What I set you. This is why we need to. We need to. <laughs> I know we need to have done this. We do better show prep. So what I'll, what I'll do is I'll just write down the category and then we can take care of it just, afterwards. Just cut and paste the text. It'll be easier to put oh, our initials. Dear Lord. Come on, man! Come on, man! Come on, Alan! I believe in you. I know you can do it. I know you can do it, man. Okay. So, all right. All right, let's do this. Okay, yeah. There's only, how many categories? 69. All right, so 69. No, it's like, I think it's about 20. Is it 20, about 23? Oh, is it really that many? One, two. Uh... How, how many? It stinks. It stinks. Alan, what? Um, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight, ten. How would you define exploitation, Alan? Exploitation, uh, gratuitous, gratuitousness. Oh, yes, Sentator. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Uh, it's live. We make mistakes. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, okay, so you've cut and pasted. Yeah, you're just gonna put yeah our so we're, we're good to go. With me later, but I'll, I'll I'll use it during during our watch. We're good party. to go. Okay, cool. And wait, we should you know we should kick this off with some music. We should kick them kick this off with a. This is this is like this is serious. And now our first category: writing original screenplay. <laughs> Okay, uh, where I'm gonna I'm gonna queue up each category with a little bit of music. All right, writing original screenplay. The nominees are the Banshees of Inishirin, Everything Everywhere All at Once, The Fablemans, Tar, and Triangle of Sadness. Now, normally writing for original screenplay generally goes to an indie movie. If you look at pa the past winners of writing original screenplay, generally the winners are independent films that don't win for win for bigger awards. For some reason, the writing category, indie films always get recognition. Um, I have a pick for this category. 
I, I think this, my pick is a lock. My pick is a lock. And that's because this movie is not going to win for best picture. And my choice for writing for original screenplay is Tar, written by Todd Field. Alan, what is your pick? So we, what we're doing is we're predicting who will actually win versus Yes. Who will win. Well, see, here's the thinking. Let's talk about Oscar pick. Now, there's who you want to win, right? Mm. Like, who am I passionate about? Who deserves it, right? And then there is who we think the Academy will choose because they don't always make the best choices and they are much more political. So there's the passion pick and then there's the who I think will win. So it depends on what you're trying to do. Are you trying to win your Oscar, your office Oscar pool? Or are you trying to, you know, what, what are, are you, are you actually just, you are putting forth, like, I believe this is the best in the category. I'm picking tar. Alan, what's your pick? Okay. So, so my, my Oscar pool pick, um, I would agree with you. I think Tar is clearly the best written original screenplay, but I think the uh, the Academy will go for everything everywhere all at once. Oh, you? Oh, okay, cool. All yeah. right. But, uh, but I would agree with you. I think Tar is the best screenplay. No, uh, on that list, it, it might too early to might be too early to point this out, but I predict a trend that Alan is only going to vote for Asians in all categories. Hey, I'm gonna I, just I I feel like that's or anyone who looks Asian. If they look Asian or whatever. So, okay, I like it. First of all, this is good because Alan and I, we, we agree on a lot of things. And then I like when when there's some disagreement there on this. Uh, let me go to our next, let me bring it up here. Our next category, our next category is, our next category, writing adapted screen. It sounds it sounds like so yeah they've got to turn that volume down okay this is this is actually our this is technically this music is written by austin smith it's the music that we use for award this we're just using it for everything award show related so writing adapted screenplay the nominees are all quiet on the western front glass onion a knives out mystery living top gun maverick and women talking now, i'm split on this one hear me out mm-hmm I I think that uh, All Quiet on the Western Front, I think, is fantastic. And I think as a chance to win. But I think, and it's it's the one I, I, I like best in this category, but I think it's going to be women talking because they're going to want to see Sarah Polly receive that award. So while All Quiet on the Western Front is kind of my passion pick, I am, I, I, I and look, I didn't love this movie at all. I think you saw my review. I did not love it. In fact, kind of didn't like, didn't like a lot of it. Uh, but I think women talking is going to win this. So put my initials down for women talking. Alan, what's your pick? Yeah, I'm going to go with women talking as well. Um, I think I liked it more than you, although I'm very conflicted on this movie. But in terms of a screenplay, uh, in terms of writing and uh, and looking at the list there, um, it, I think it has to go to women talking in the, in the sense of the use of dialogue and, and storytelling. Uh, I, I mean, Top Gun Maverick, I like Top Gun Maverick, but is the screenplay something you write home about? Yeah, I mean, Top Gun Maverick was a very basic 80s blockbuster. Mm -hmm. And it was so refreshing because we hadn't seen something like that. So, uh, you know, yeah. But I think Women Talking is going to win it. Also, it's like a virtue signal points because mm -hmm. it was the screenplay was written. I mean, the movie was directed by Sarah Polly and written by her. She is going to be accepting that award. I'm telling you. Uh, yeah. We're going to give you the edge when it comes to, if you're going to be betting, especially when it comes to the short films, which Alan and I have seen most of them combined. So um, here we go. All right. Now we're switching categories. I got to figure out an easier way to do this. All right. Switching categories now to, okay, here we go. Um, By the way, uh, Maverick is adapted because it's a sequel. Oh, is that why it's, is that why it's it? Yeah. Okay. All right. And now, previous. Yeah. Okay. And now we have uh, category best visual effect. The nominees are All Quiet on the Western Front, Avatar, The Way of Water, The Batman, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, and Top Gun Maverick. 
All right. So does it... <laughs> Is I just wonder from everyone in the chat, is that annoying that music kind of I think it's fun. <laughs> I, I, I turned it down a bit. That's, that's turn it down. All right. We're pretending we're doing this. Is get ready for Sunday. It's get ready for Sunday. I will be <laughs> by be the end of the show. <laughs> I will wear a tuxedo, at least the top half. I'll be wearing a tuxedo. Uh, but it's um I'm gonna be so plastered drunk by the end. Get ready, slouching on my couch. All right. Uh, so we have the nominees here. Now, this is an interesting category. I have a theory about this, but this theory has been broken in the last couple of years. Normally, the category best visual effects goes to th the winner of this category is the best genre movie, right? Mm -hmm. So there would be movies that I thought had better visual effects, but they weren't that great. So then the award for best visual effects is like the best science fiction movie, best genre film. Um, in terms of this, this is a tough one. This is a tough one. I, I don't think it's going to go to Top Gun Maverick. I, I and, and look, do I want it to? Absolutely. 100%. It should go to Top Gun Maverick. It's I don't think it's going to go to uh, Wakanda Forever because those effects were terrible. Um, it could go to the Batman. It could go to Avatar The Way of Water. Uh, and All Quiet in the Western Front, uh, if you've seen that film and I did see it in the theater, I'm telling you, the visual effects in this thing and the soundtrack by the way, which is on Spotify, exceptional music in it. Uh, this this one I'm tough, Alan. I want to hear your pick first. Visual, yeah, effects. Avatar: Way of Water. That's that's my. Pick. You think so? Yeah, I think so. I, I think it's uh, from a visual sex. I mean, the whole movie is not a visual is a visual effect. Did you say visual sex? No, I said <laughs> visual effects. I said I think somebody clipped. The, I think yeah. Alan said visual sex. I'm pretty sure he said visuals. Visuals. I could see how you, yeah. you could slur that. Because I'm much more into audio sex than I am visual sex. So. Well, there you go. Um, yeah. But but I, I, I think uh, in terms of an achievement, um, yeah, I, you know, I, I it was done well. Uh, that's all I can say. I think it's a definite improvement from from the first one. And so well, I would give it that. Top Gun. I would, you know, that's more cinematography than than I would say visual effects. But it's uh, convincing. Avatar: The Way of Water. There, are, look, it's visually, it's gorgeous, it's amazing, it's Cameron. Um, but I would, I really want to see Top Gun: Maverick win in this. So while I, while I think that Avatar: Way, of Water, I'm going to go Top Gun: Maverick because Top Gun: Maverick is going to move, it's okay. going to lose when it comes to Best Picture. You're saying Avatar: Way of Water. This yeah. is to me, this is one of the hardest categories because there are ways to thread the needle, with the exception of Black Panther: Wakanda Forever. Mm -hmm. There are ways to argue that each one of these has a shot. So, uh, did you mark it, Alan? Yes, I did. I okay. have Avatar. You have Top Gun. All right, all right. So. Here we go. Now, moving on. In the category of sound, the nominees are All Quiet on the Western Front, Avatar The Way of Water, The Batman, Elvis, and Top Gun Maverick. Alan, what are your thoughts on sound? And sound, they combined it into one category. Yeah. It used to be, by the way, it sound, used sound design. Was this that... category used to be two categories. It used to be sound editing, okay, which is yeah. a whole other thing. And then sound, I believe it was like sound mixing or sound design. Those are really two separate jobs. And what they did was, is they presented those off camera and people got pissed off. So now it's like, all right, we're just going to combine it into one category. <laughs> you guys got uh, so upset. We're going to take one of the categories away and combine it with another. I, you know what I'm going to say on this? I, I, I really think it's a battle between Avatar and All Quiet on the Western Front. I'm going to go All Quiet on the Western Front. Alan, your thoughts? Oh, this this is a tough one. Um, one one movie that should be on here is Tar. Absolutely should have been on here. Yes, because um, if, if you if you've seen Tar, you know exactly what I mean. The, the sound is amazing. Uh, the use of sound is uh, even more incredible in a way that. You don't expect so it's not on the list. Ah, uh, gosh. You know Alan, what? I'm uh, leaving you. Yeah, you know what? Tell you what, I'm gonna. I'll go. I'll go the popular route. I'm gonna say Top Gun. Wait, so are we both saying Top Gun? No, you said All Quiet. Oh, that's right, All Quiet. I think it's gonna be a battle between those two. I think so. But All Quiet, my God, like it's just especially having seen it in the theater. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, th look, this is my personal pick. 
It's my personal pick, okay? And unfortunately, as I've discovered, people have not seen this movie. Not as many people. I know. Well, especially not, well, definitely not in the theater. Uh, yeah. It, it's, it did its obligatory Oscar run. Whoops, sorry. It did no. its obligatory Oscar run, and then it's, it's on Netflix. Yeah, well, look, and someone confirming, Rafael Lopez says, he said visual sex. See? I'm I'm right. That's the best kind, huh? Yeah. V- visual. <laughs> all, right. all right. We're going to get to your comments in a minute. Let's just do one more category. Then we'll go to all the starred comments that Alan has been dutifully starring. Thank you, Alan. Alan doing double duty. He's keeping track of our Oscar picks and he's keeping, he's, uh, he's doing that. Okay. Now this is, this, oh, this yeah. is a good one. This Maybe is a tough one. This is a tough one. This is now here's the problem. A lot of people have not seen this. Okay. A lot of people have not seen these. So here we are. The categories for short film animation. Are you doing no live action? No, yeah. Sh- sorry, short film live action category. The nominees are An Irish Goodbye, Ivalu, Le Pupil, Night Ride, The Red Suitcase. Okay. Here's what I'll say. I have a favorite in this category. I saw this in a theater. I saw all five of these nominees. The best movie in this category is An Irish Goodbye. It's the story of two brothers, one who've lost their mother. Their mother's passed away and they have uh, an urn with her ashes. And the mother leaves, supposedly leaves behind a list of the 100, it's, it's her bucket list of the 100 things she wanted to do before she died. And she didn't get to do these things. So the two brothers endeavor to do all of these things with her urn filled with ashes. So they go up in a, a hot air balloon. They do all these things. The two, one of the brothers has Down syndrome and it's played by a Down syndrome actor. Um, I have a stepbrother who has Down syndrome. So I always like when there's some authenticity to that. And um, many Down syndrome, it's very, he's my stepbrother's very high functioning so basically he is like the maturity of like a 13 or 14 year old and he has a job and goes about his life. And, and, um, and so I always like when there's some authenticity to it. it's my favorite of these five movies. Mm-hmm. Having said that, I'm not sure it's the movie that's going to win. Ivalu, I found very pretentious. Le Pupil was just really self-indulgent. Yeah. Yeah. Night Ride, I thought was very funny and features, uh, uh, it was really interesting, this little person uh, sort of takes off in, on a, a subway car, not a subway car, like a, a, trolley. Metro, a, a trolley car, and just was like, she just accidentally kind of sets it off and, on, on this ride, and then a trans person kind of joins and is being bullied. I could see that one potentially winning. I thought it was much better than I thought it would be. Um, and then the red suitcase is probably going to be the winner because it's political. The Red Suitcase is about a a young uh, woman. Yeah, Muslim woman. A young Muslim woman on an arranged marriage who wants to escape the arranged marriage. And she's at an airport carrying a red suitcase. And the results of that, it's the one that is the most political of them. Night Ride features a trans uh, character. Um, that I, thought, that I, had no prob- I had no problem with it. It was a comedy. It was I funny. Is it, I thought it was a good one, too. I thought it was a good one. My two favorites are Irish Goodbye and Night Ride. If I'm picking the movie I like the best, Irish Goodbye was great. It was funny, just short enough. Ivalu and Le Pupil, Pupil uh, too, way too long, both of those. Uh, but I think the winner is going to be The Red Suitcase. That's okay. my... what. Now, you've seen these as well, Alan. And a lot of these movies you can find actually on YouTube. Yeah, like Le Pupil is on uh, Disney+. Plus. Disney Plus, and then also there's a website called shorts.tv and they post all of the Oscar nominee nominated shorts. Oh, uh, I wish I'd, yeah, okay. Why do a- Alan? Yeah, we're always doing live streams, like, we barely have time to like talk about work. I know, but um, I think the red suitcase is going to win because of the political message. But Irish Goodbye is my personal favorite. I'm almost like I, could you do a little asterisk on Irish Goodbye? If it wins, I want points. But <laughs> no, Red Suitcase is probably 
because it's the one that like people are going to vote for because it's like all right cool it's the theme of mm-hmm. it it's like um you know women in empow- female empowerment you know uh all of that it's just yeah. it's got all those things circling around it so the ones that are just re- it's not it's not a particularly entertaining movie i thought it just annoyed the the movie kind of annoyed me too because it's like the suspense was so obvious. It's like, where's the red suitcase? He's looking for a woman, a young woman with a red suitcase. Like, it's just, uh, it just went on and on. So I'm not a fan of that movie, but I think it'll probably win. Alan, this is the funny thing. This is the funny thing. You you and I are exactly the opposite on this one. Mm. Um, I, I I enjoyed, I liked the red suitcase. I don't think it's as political as you say it is. Right. It's a typical story of a woman who's uh, who lands in a new country, uh, wants to ditch her arranged marriage, um, and uh, and it's just that suspense thing. And I, I liked it. I, I bought along with the suspense. Having said that, I think Irish Goodbye is the one that's going to win it. And and you know, I think it's I think it's the most uplifting. The most, I, I think I, I think we're. I think the Academy is looking for uplifting and positive and, and Irish goodbye is that is exactly that. Uh, Alan, I just got some news. I'm changing my vote to Irish. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, then you're going to, you're only really going to get half credit. Then. <laughs> well, cause I look, I, I just like, I love I watched all five. It was the last one of the five yeah. I saw. It screened last. It was the best. Yeah, was, I mean, I, I really enjoyed Night Ride. Uh, it's it's funny. Yes, Night Ride was good too. Yeah, it's funny. It's got a you know, it's it's. I like these stories that are kind of. This, the story's not exactly the greatest, but just the fact that there's no one in it you know, right? And, uh, and it's just a nice story told straightforward. I, I really did enjoy it. It's funny. It's uh, lighthearted. But yeah, you know, Irish goodbye. And I like the little interaction between the uh, little person and the the trance actor. I yeah. thought it was. I thought it just worked. It yes. worked. It it felt authentic. <laughs> so all right. Well, I'm going with my. It's, so it's hard. Like, do I want to go with my heart or do I want to go with like what I think the Academy is going to vote? Mm-hmm. You know. So uh, it's a it's a it's a tough one. All right. So now let's take a look at the category. The next category for short film animated. And the nominees are The Boy, The Mole, The Fox, and The Horse, The Flying Sailor, Ice Merchant, My Year of Dick, An Ostrich Told Me the World is Fake, and I Think I Believe It. Okay, that last one, the category is like kind of, it's, um, yeah, it's it's a a weird title. Okay, yeah, I will tell you that the last one there, the An Ostrich Told Me the World was. Fake and I believe it. That that's um, there's a program for Oscar that the Oscars do for student filmmakers, and that was the winner of the student film. Well, I'll I'll say this. Um, th- that one it's sort of I have two favorites in this category. Um, and I'll tell you briefly what these are about. The boy, the mole, the fox, and the horse is like it's almost like a children's storybook read aloud. Idris Elba does does one of the mm-hmm. voices. It's a cute fable, and I thought it was fine. Yeah. And so, it's on Apple Plus. You can see it on Apple Plus. Yeah, nobody has that, Alan. Nobody has <laughs> no. Apple Plus. Um, the Flying Sailor is a weird, like I like it because I love I used to as a kid, one of my favorite things was to go the go to the animation celebration. Then I started going to Spike and Mike. I would go to that every year when I moved to Los Angeles, they would play it in a theater. And so I love short animated movies. So many great, like, I mean, Beavis and Butthead came from a short animated film that played at Spike and Mike's uh, uh, Mm -hmm. film festival. It was the name of the short was frog baseball. Yeah. (laughs) Which eventually played on MTV flying sailors, like a weird animation style about a true story. Um, from Canada about an explosion that took place at a dock and a sailor flew up in the air, like two kilometers landed and lived. And it's, it's, it's about that event. Uh, Ice merchants I thought was like an interesting style story of a father and a, and a son and just sort of, it was just like, Oh, cool visual style. And your point is what Um, my year of dicks is sort of a, I thought my year of dicks was great. And I got to tell you something. So when I went to see this in the theater, right, it was a packed theater. I couldn't believe it. A packed theater. And and a young mother had brought her two kids who sat in the front row of this movie. And right before they they showed all four of the shorts. And when they got to My Year of Dicks, they said, warning, 
the next film you're about to see is specifically not for children. If you have children with you, please leave the theater now. It was like this scary <laughs> warning. We will give you time to collect your belongings and leave. It was like, oh my God. And I'm like, look at the only kid where this like young mom with her two kids and they were just like, they're watching cartoons, right? They're like, holy cow. The mom got up and left. And then the title of the movie came on and it said, my year of dicks. And everybody burst out laughing. It was great. <laughs> Like the whole theater just erupted in applause and laughter. It's really a good, it's, it was played at South by Southwest. It's sort of a mixed media in terms of mixed animation styles. It's got a mixes, a little bit of live action, but it's, it's a true story of a young woman and her, she, she wants to lose her virginity eventually, but it's all about like how her sort of like awkward, awkward, trying to be with a boy and it's very personal it comes from like a true diary that this young woman kept when she was like 15 or 16 years old and it was about just sort of her fumbling awkward bad relationships with you know other boys around her age and it's funny because it's very personal it's real they use an animation style that that has some realism to it there's the, the stories are hilarious and it's, it's about 20 minutes, but it's sort of like just telling the story of each boy she interacted with until she finally finds a boy that she feels comfortable enough um, being intimate with. I thought it was very funny. Um, and I can't wait. I cannot wait for the person to say the when they go through the nominees, if it's on camera, say my year of dicks. This way it won't be on camera. I can guarantee you. It probably won't. But... Um, in spite of that, I really, really enjoyed it. In spite of it, the one I liked the most was an, an ostrich told me the world is fake and I believe it. It's a stop motion animated movie about a, uh, a stop motion character that's in some TV commercial that becomes self-aware and alive. So what it does is when you're shooting stop motion animation, I used to make these movies when I was a kid, it kind of pops out of frame and you can see the people around it. And it's, it's the animated character becoming self-aware. It's really cool short. That was my personal favorite. I would say My Year of Dicks is second. The other ones, you know, whatever. Alan, what are your thoughts on the short film animated? Yeah, so this will be a tough one for me. I've only seen two and a half of them. I saw Ice Merchants, The Flying Sailor, and half of The Boy, The Mole, The Fox and the yeah. Horse. Um, I'm going to go, I'm going to go Dark Horse here, and I'll go with My Year of Dicks. I have no reason. Uh, I do want to see it. Uh, right. Uh, yeah, but uh, I'm gonna go with that. Just maybe, maybe the academy will find a sense of humor. Once I, again. I'm, I'm gonna go with my year of dicks also, just because oh, again, okay. I think it has a message to it. Um, but if you are a fan of animation, an ostrich like that one, put an asterisk on uh, by that. I want that, I want extra credit for that one if it somehow wins. But I think my year of dicks is gonna win, okay. And they might even do like my year of dicks. How would they? Do they just asterisk it? Do they bleep it? How do you do that on the show? No, you can say uh, my year, dicks. All right. Yeah, now we're getting to oh. the, the two next sections. It's going to be uh, technical awards is what we're coming up on. And then the big awards uh, for the end. So here we go. Um, and now let's talk about the Oscar nominees for production design. All Avatar The Way of Water, Babylon, Elvis, and The Fablemans for production design. Alan, what are your thoughts on production design among production. these nominees? Uh, I will say I will go with the film that had the greatest achievement in production design, uh, and I think that's Babylon. I think so, too. I didn't know you were going to say that. Yeah. Uh, Babylon. I think it's Babylon. Avatar. I mean, Elvis, oh, Elvis might come in second, but... Uh, Babylon definitely. Babylon for sure. I think it's uh, yeah. I think it'll do better in in the technical categories. Mm -hmm. uh, well, not a lot of argument there. I can't get all of these on the screen. Oh, best picture. We're gonna save that to the yeah, end. Let's get that one. Yeah. Let's say that. Okay, let's do. Let's. Okay, we're gonna do this one right now. <laughs> uh, here we go. Let's talk about the nominees. Do we even need to talk music, about it? <laughs> original song. <laughs> music original song. I wonder what the nominees are. Uh, applause. And tell it like a woman. Uh, hold my hand from Top Gun Maverick. Lift me up from Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. 
not do not do from rrr and this is a life from everything everywhere all at once here's the thing here's the thing i'm picking not to not to and my understanding is they are going to perform that song at the oscars because the, it, it's only the one oscar nomination but i think lift me up from black panther could get it i think lift me up i want an asterisk next to lift me up because that's my second choice i think it could because not to not to for some reason did not get the love that it, it was supposed to get from the oscars uh what's your pick alan rrr you're saying didn't get love yeah rrr yeah yeah no i, I completely agree uh, i think it's not to not to it's 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 swept everything so far uh, i think if there is a second it's hold my hand uh oh really come on hey, lady what, gaga what? Yeah. You know, okay. Who? What? What's the other one? What's the other one you really in, enjoyed and loved? None of them. I. I just. Yeah. That's so, up. You got to pick one. I, no, I'm thinking not to, not, not to. to. It's pretty easy. Yeah. yeah. No. I, no. I'm saying if there was a second place, or if, or you know, if there was a second um, place, all right, fine. Uh, look, I still think it's the it's the Black Panther one. I don't even remember the Black Panther one. It's in. Uh, it's it's the it's the big so it's it's in all the ads. Yeah. All right, let's yeah. let's move on here. That was an easy one. Yeah. Let's move on to music. Wait, here I gotta Four. get this set up here. Music original score, and the nominees are All Quiet on the Western Front, Babylon, The Banshees of Inisherin, Everything Everywhere All at Once, and The Fablemans. And I'd like to note The Fablemans. John Williams wrote the score for that. So. Here's my, here's my thought on this. Okay. Uh, Justin Hurwitz already won for Babylon at the Golden Globes. He already won. What do I think is the best score of these? It's all quiet on the Western front. For anyone who's seen the movie, if you've heard the score on Spotify, um, it's amazing score. But uh, I think Babylon could also take this. Uh, again, I'm going to go Babylon, but then an asterisk on all quiet. <laughs> You're just hedging your bets here. Yeah, wow. well, I was telling you, like, you know, then we'll see how I did. If I'd only, do I go with my gut or do I go with what I think is going to win? I think Babylon will get that one. Because, how you know why? Because Hollywood loves itself. And Babylon is a movie about Hollywood. And in particular, people, Academy members that vote, they love old Hollywood. Anything related to old Hollywood, they love it. So, All Alan, right. your, your, tick, your pick? Yeah, I... Okay, so it is it is down to two, Babylon being one of them. But, you know, I feel like the Academy is going to give it to the Fablemans. And really? I, and I think I think it's because of John Williams. Uh, uh, he's only got I, a few movies left in him. Uh, you know. Dude, in my I think, head, I can, I can, like, think of the Babylon score, All Quiet score. I can, I can hear it in my head. Mm -hmm. Can't even hear the Fableman score. I Not know. at all. No, I, I completely agree, but I think if, if we're going, who's going to win? Uh, I think it's the favorites. All right, fine. Uh, I'm we'll glad go, that we'll a lot of our I'm glad a lot of our uh, picks are very different. Our picks are 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 we? Someone's going to win. I'm going to keep count. By the way, I know you're going to dip yeah. out on the stream early, but I'm going to keep count. And now the nominees for makeup, for makeup and hairstyle, all quiet on the Western Front. The Batman, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, Elvis, and The Whale. Alan, <laughs> your thought on makeup, makeup and hair. Uh, yeah, this is a weird category. I, the, these movies are very diverse in the way they use makeup and hairstyle. I mean, the reality is there's only one reason The Whale is on this list, and that's Brendan Fraser. Fraser. Um, I could also see it going to Elvis. I was going to so, say Elvis and the whale are kind of like my top. I will pick. Yeah. You know, I'm probably, oh, man. Yeah. I mean, the, the, thing is, the only reason the whales on here is Brendan Fraser. That That's, that's it. Yeah. Otherwise it would not be in the makeup and hair category. Um, I'm going to go with Elvis. I'll go with the whale because okay. I'll say this. The makeup and hairstyling contributed to the performance. 
contributed to Brendan Fraser's performance and what helped him get nominated for Best Actor. Mm -hmm. And I, and my feeling is, was that enough? It, it, you know, will enough of the Academy just say this one thing is what's going to get the Oscar nomination? Yeah. And and I'm not sure. And I think, hey, look, I, Tom Hanks got into a fat suit, so you know, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, now let's go to our uh, other categories here. The next category is international feature film. Oh, wait, let me, I got to get, I got to cue. I, I like, see, I like the pomp and circumstance of the music. And now, nominees for international feature film. All Quiet on the Western Front. Argentina, 1985. Close. EO. The Quiet Girl. I guess I should have mentioned the countries. All Quiet is Germany. Argentina is Argentina. Close is Belgium. EO is Poland. The Quiet Girl is Ireland. Alan, uh, I think it's All Quiet on the Western Front. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I think so. Um, the other yeah. one might be... Uh, 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 Eric saw The Quiet Girl. He, he was not in love with it. Argentina, it could be Argentina 1985, but I think it's going to be All Quiet on the Western Front because it's so profoundly... these Those other movies are very small films. All Quiet is a war epic. And yeah, I mean, if you think about what, what they're talking about, they're talking about All Quiet on the Western Front. They're not even... Maybe Argentina, and only because Victoria Alonso it, is talking about it. It's going to be uh, All Quiet, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, that's... that's there we go. Yeah, right. I, I think you're right. Okay, more technical categories as we go down the list here. So here we go. For film editing, the nominees are The Banshees of Inisherin, Elvis, Everything Everywhere All at Once, Car, and Hop Gun Maverick. Alan, who is your pick? Which film well, is you your know. pick? <laughs> you know my pick. It's Everything Everywhere All at Once. Uh, Again. That's been that whole movie is about editing. It's there's nothing. The movie is just a constant stream of editing. So I'm you know giving what? it to everything, everywhere, all at once. I, when you to me, it's uh, either Top Gun or Everything Everywhere All at Once. I think Tar could be argued because part of the performance is how it was edited. Um, but I'm gonna go E E A A O. Okay. Everything everywhere all at once. And, and let me remind you about Tar. It's uh, it's mostly one shots. So there's not a whole lot of editing when it comes to a one shot. All right. And now we're going to move this along quicker, just like yeah. any award show goes too long. Documentary short, the nominees for documentary short film are The Elephant Whisperers, Paul Out, How Do You Measure a Year, The Martha Mitchell Effect, and Stranger at the Gate. Alan, what is your choice? Uh, documentary uh, short film. I will say I've not seen many of these. Um, uh, we do have reviews for... We have reviews, theater. I think, for all of them. Wait, did we yeah. ever get those roundup stories for the... Not yet. Not yet. Because I'm, right. I'm still getting reviews in for, for these. We, it would be uh, great. Remember that one year, it was 2019, where we had reviews of all of them, and our yeah. site was getting hit with traffic? Yeah. That our would be is, great. Our site is... Okay, um, Gosh. Are we, so we're not doing a roundup story, huh? Uh, if I can do it tomorrow before oh, I leave. God. Um, but let's, I think the elephant whispers only because I've heard of that one, because I keep getting releases about it. And yeah. I, when you see how hard they're pushing, I'm, a, this is, this is a guess. This is an educated guess. Everyone um, is, I think, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be that only because they do keep pushing it. Mm -hmm. So what are your thoughts? Yes. I'm going to go, how do you measure a year uh, for no other reason than, the title sounds interesting. I think I just read the re our review on it. It's so funny. We have to read our own website. I know. To actually, like, what about could these? It be? Um, and now here we go. Think. Here we go on this one. Uh, moving on to the next category because we gotta we gotta hustle. We gotta yeah. hustle. By the way, how do you measure a year? Is like like Boyhood. Documentary feature film. The nominees are All That Breathes, All the Beauty and the Bloodshed, Fire of Love, House Made of Splinters. And Navalny. So uh, I am going to go with. See, I don't think it's going to win. I think what deserves to win is Fire of Love, because it's a it's 
effectively a found footage movie. It's an archival doc mm -hmm. about two scientists, volcanologists who studied volcanoes who died tragically. I saw it in a theater. It's fantastic. The other one I know about that could edge is all the beauty in the bloodshed, but fire of love. I'm, I'm, I'm picking fire of love. Alan, what's your pick? Oh, you are picking fire of love. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm picking fire of love as well. All right. Well, there we go. Yeah. It's definitely the most well-known of the five. Uh, cool. Maybe I Navalny. They, they've been really pushing Navalny lately. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I think that one has the, I think it's the most accessible of the five. All right. Here of... we go. Uh, we're going to skip directing and go to costume design. And the nominees are Babylon, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, Elvis, Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, and Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris. I, I've seen Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris. I've seen Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris. I saw it in a theater. It's probably going to win because it's about fashion. It is about fashion and designing costumes. So I think costume designers. Now, my, my second choice would be Babylon, but I think it's going to go to Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris. Alan, your thoughts? Okay. Uh, I'm going to go with Elvis. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I, I think, you know, not that I have really any pulse on on costume design and what, what makes it want to win or not. But I, I think Elvis, I do like the costumes. You know, we're talking Elvis here. Uh, right. There's nothing, there's nothing uh, subtle about Elvis. And, and I think the movie captured a lot of. It's a, a gratuitous, gratuitous, Yeah. Gratuitous. Exactly. Uh, all right. Moving on to our next category. Here we go. It is cinematography best cinematography the nominees are all quiet on the western front ardo false chronicle of a handful of truths elvis empire of light and car uh this is gonna this is gonna be a tough one mm -hmm. and i'll tell you why because her empire of light is uh the cinematography is by roger deakins who's very popular in the American Society of Cinematographers, the ASC. Um, I think the movies that are in contention are like almost all of these movies that could be good arguments. Tar, Elvis, mm -hmm. the same thing, cinematography. Um, I think it's going to go to All Quiet. That's my pick, is All Quiet. Alan, your thoughts? Yeah. I mean, like, I didn't get through all of Bardo, but I can tell you the cinematography is very good in it. Um, gosh. Uh, Empire Light, I... I it's, it's Roger like, Deakins because I it's, know it's, that's the only reason it's there. Uh, he's a very I feel like that movie was too big for its story, right? Right. And and I think the cinematography plays into that. It's just it's not it's just too big. Um, I'm gonna go with Elvis just to uh, just to mix things up here. All right, fair enough. I think you know Baz Luhrmann has a very distinct style, and I thought it was captured well. Cool. All right. Oh, this category uh, I know Alan is going to be very excited about. Yes. Uh, the nominees for animated feature film Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio, Marcel the Shell with Shoes On, Puss in Boots, The Last Wish, The Sea Beast, and Turning Red from Disney. Alan? What is what is your pick in this category? Okay, so if we're going with what will win, it will be Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. That's what I was going to say. The same thing. Yeah. What do, what do I want to win? Marcel the Cell. Yeah. Yeah. You That's, and I on the same page an, on that one. Put an asterisk on that. Puss in Boots though could be argued. Um, uh, it's very good. Okay. But uh, I think del Toro's Pinocchio because here's why people forget this. This is partially a popularity contest. Mm -hmm. It's partially a popularity contest and everybody loves Guillermo del Toro, right? Everybody loves it. The fact that Marcel, the shell with shoes on is in the category is great, but it's going to be Pinocchio. Yeah. You know what's, you know what I'm glad isn't here? The Pinocchio that was on Disney plus. That was not <laughs> awful. That was one of the well, worst. Technically that's not an animated feature. So. One of the worst movies of the year is that movie. Yeah. Oh, wow. Right. Now we're in the main categories. Let's go down to direct. And, and I don't know how Turning Red... Uh, I mean, I guess how I did know. How did that even get in that category? All what right. Okay. How did that even get in the category? I can't even... Turning Red. Oh, I think they're desperate for another 
Because because either that or it was Pinocchio. All right, now we're down to the big categories now. Okay. Here are the nominees for best director: the Banshees of Inisherin, Martin McDonough, Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, Daniel Kwan, and Daniel Shiner. The Fablemans, Steven Spielberg, Car, Todd Field, Triangle of Sadness, Ruben Uslan. Alan, who will win for best director? Who will win? It will be the Daniels for everything, everywhere, all at once. That is exactly right. That is the correct answer. The Daniels are going to win. They have won it. I think they've won it almost every major award show. Having said that, having said that, let me put a little asterisk. The Fablemans could win. Let me tell you why. Everybody loves Steven Spielberg. It is a very personal story. It is a very good movie for those of you who ventured outside of the, just, all right, I'll see the Fablemans. And people want to see, it'll be the last time Spielberg has an opportunity to, you know, to give a speech at the Oscars. So there's a sentimentality for Spielberg. Don't be surprised if Spielberg wins. Okay. I, I find it ironic surprised. because early in his career, he couldn't even buy an Oscar. Uh, Color Purple, for example, couldn't even get that one. Yeah. Um, you know, there was a feeling for a very long time that Steven Spielberg was never going to get an Academy Award. And they had, they had to wait till Schindler's List to let it happen. Right. So he has one, but I do think it's almost like his swan song. Like this movie is like, it's like a love letter to movies partially. It is based very close to his life. I mean, he just says it's his life story. Um, it's a very good Spielberg movie where there have not been very good Spielberg, Spielberg movies in a long time. So... Don't be surprised if that one is an upset, but EEAO, uh, the Daniels winning is, I mean, yeah, it's I'm just saying, I, I did not like the Fablemans as much as you did. Um, okay, now things are going to be go really quick here. Yeah, okay, here we go. Let me let me, I gotta cue this up. I gotta cue this up. And the nominees are for actress in a supporting role Angela Bassett for Black Panther Wakanda Forever, Hong Chow. For the Whale, Harry Condon, The Banshees of Inisherin, Jamie Lee Curtis, Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, and Steve Stephanie Chu, Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. Alan, who is going to win? Angela Bassett will win. Angela Bassett will win. Yeah. There's uh, really I, not a uh, lot of argument here. Yeah. I, I will say, um, as much as we disliked uh, Wakanda Forever, Angela Bassett was especially good in it. And I think, uh, and, and I even Great. thought about it while watching it, that I should get an Oscar nomination for this. Uh, then This will be the only Oscar nomination this movie deserves. But I, look, I love Angela Bassett. She should have played Storm in the X-Men. If they reboot, yeah. if they reboot, nothing Marvel does is going to be of interest yeah. going forward. I can't, I just, all the the Disneyfication of Marvel and Star Wars has destroyed both of those brands. Yeah, it's destroyed it. Um, okay, and now I was saying they never should have killed her in Wakanda Forever. All right. Yes. Spoiler. <laughs> actor in a it's act. Wait, no, darn it, I did it wrong. Screwing this up. Uh, okay, no, I had it right. Dang it. Got it. <laughs> Forgive me, folks. Actor in a supporting role, Brendan Gleeson for The Banshees of Inisherin, Brian Tyree Henry for Causeway, Judd Hirsch for The Fake Woman's, Mary Kilgan for The Banshees of Inisherin, and Kihei Kwan for Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. Alan, who's going to take home the gold? Okay. I, I was going to say Judd Hirsch, but I feel like that if he was in the movie for four minutes instead of three minutes, uh, it would have made the difference. Uh, but it's Kihei Kwan. John uh, Hirsch, I'm surprised he was even nominated because no, does he have he's like barely in it. He was barely in it. I thought I thought when Uncle Judd arrives, he would be in the for the rest of the movie. And he's in and he's out. But that was it. He now, tells the no, story. No disrespect to Kihei Kwan, who's going to win. That is my pick. Kihei Kwan is going to win. Uh, mm. Brian Tyree Henry is fantastic in Causeway. He really is the second lead in that film. He is amazing. Put an asterisk next to his name. That could be an upset because everyone's yeah, like, ah, it could be an upset. Let me tell you why. Oscar voting happens late. They just finished Oscar voting last week. We have seen Kihei Kwan win every major award at every award show. 
Other people might be, you know what? Other voters thinking might be Kihei Kwan is one everywhere else. Why don't we just give it? I'm going to, I'm going to vote for Brian just because he was going to vote for him. No, no. I'm saying Kihei Kwan is my winner's choice. If there's an upset, it's Brian Tyree Henry. So put an ask. So so you're saying it's the should win versus the will win. No, I'm not saying should necessarily. I'm saying that like, because Kihei Kwan has already won so much, a lot of people just say, well, that's why it's like, you kind of want to like, you know, everyone's like, oh, this person's going to win. You never know. It, there could be upsets. I'm saying there could be an upset with Brian Tyree Henry. I, I, yeah, I just Oscar question. If, on, it's on Apple uh, TV Plus, actually. I just question if Oscars even thinks that way. If Academy voters think that way in terms of, you know, oh, they won everything so far, so I'm not going to vote for that person. I don't, I don't know that they do that. All right, we got to hurry because we have yeah. our uh, special guest joining us yes. in about 10 minutes, but we'll get well, to we have three categories, so let's do this. Only three more categories, so let's go. I'm going to go with this dumb thing of playing music. They, and now... Actress in a leading role. Actress in a leading role. The nominees are Kihei, it's, not, it's Kate Blanchett for Tar, Anna Diarmas for Blonde, Andrea Risebrook for Two Leslie, Michelle Williams for The Fablemans, and Michelle Yeoh for Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. Okay, now, it's between two people here. Yeah. It's Michelle Yeoh for Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, or Kate Blanchett for Tar. Both have won at different award shows. What is going to happen, Alan? It will. Let's let's be clear. Uh, Michelle Yeoh won for best comedy, uh, and Kate Blanchett won for best drama at the Golden Globes. Uh, it will be Kate Blanchett. Uh, I think I, I so. Think, yeah, I think so. I that that role. I mean, uh, hands down, that was an amazing performance. Uh, th- it was. It pushes an actor that that role of uh, of uh, I forget the name, but Tar. Uh, it, it's such a complex complex. Not not every actor can do that role, and uh, and so that's why I'm going to give it to Kate Blanchett. It's it's a phenomenal performance, absolutely. Yeah, I I think it's going to be Kate Blanchett too. But put an asterisk next to Michelle Yeoh because there could be an upset again. Another one of the cases of. Academy voters have seen uh, have seen Kate Blanchett win, and then she won, and then she won again, and then she won again. Yeah, and they might say, you know what? I'd like to see Michelle Yeoh win. That would be amazing. Yeah, I, I would say if there was an upset, it, it would definitely be in this category versus any of the other ones. Right. All right. Uh, and now we go to uh, did I pass it? It's actor, actor now. Yeah, actor, very top. There you go. Very top. Okay, here we go. And the nominees are for actor in a leading role. Austin Butler for Elvis. Colin Farrell, the Banshees of Inisherin. Brendan Fraser for The Whale. Paul Mescal for Apperson. And Phil Nye for Living. Alan, who will win at Best Actor? Yeah, this is a tough one. Um, it not it seems easy, but it's a tough one. Um, it's between Brendan Fraser and Austin Butler, and uh, I, just, I don't know. Part of me is like, my gut tells me Brendan Fraser will win, but I'm gonna say it's Austin Butler. And I'm gonna say Brendan Fraser. Here's why: if 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 Austin Butler was because Austin Butler is a young kid, mm-hmm. he's a young kid. And he will have many more opportunities to win a, an Oscar. Many more if he can lose that accent. But uh, you know, Brendan Fraser is th- this is sort of a, a he's a very well liked in Hollywood. Although he had some falling out with some producers, my understanding. But uh, he um, he uh, he's very well liked. I think people in general like Brendan Fraser. I think he's going to win. I think Austin Butler will. Be, it won't be his last time being nominated for an Oscar, but I really think Brendan Fraser for The Whale is going to win for actor. Pretty pretty confident in that. Yeah, I, I the only thing I don't agree with, I, I don't think we'll be seeing Austin Butler at the Academy Awards again. Well, um, I th- also it, think it, that, is it, a, is it, is it a, a better performance? It could be, it's so It cool. is a better like, performance. I think it's a better performance. I really do. I think a lot of the makeup did the acting for Brendan Fraser. Mm-hmm. Um you know, no disrespect. Yeah. And, and there's Austin a sentimentality Butler. behind that role that that would that that's won him that award so far. But Austin I, Butler just it's it's a full body performance. Yeah. 
Yeah, and even though he didn't look like Elvis, uh, he sounded like Elvis. I uh, thought he looked like Elvis. He, I well, no, I don't think he looked like Elvis, but uh, you know, but but it didn't matter at that point because uh, the performance made him Elvis. Right. All right, and now where's the best picture? Did they put it down? Oh, like... it's, it's alphabetically P. There it is, right there. Okay, best picture. All right, here we go. Our final category, folks. Then we'll go to your chat comments and questions. Here we go. The nominees for best picture. All Quiet on the Western Front. Avatar, The Way of Water. And she's of Inishirin. Elvis. Everything, everywhere, all at once. The Fableman. Car. The Maverick. Triangle of Sadness. Women Talking. Alan, who is going to win for best picture? Yes. I'm going to make uh, Eric Weber's head explode. And I'm going to say everything, everywhere, all at once. It, it is my favorite movie of the year. And uh, and I think it will win. It's it's won the big prize so far. I think it's going to do it this time. So, yeah. This so, is our winner's music. I know. So, Eric Weber, you're wrong. It is a great movie. And uh, and it will win. And no, it's, it's, it's light years better than Coda. Well... It's been it's been sweeping every award show. Mm -hmm. Every award show. Do I go with the one that of these movies I love the best? Which I'll tell you what that movie is. It's all quiet on the Western Front. RRR should have been on this list and it would have been my pick, but it's not. I have to choose from among these movies. All quiet. And I believe it's an important film. Why? Because we're living in a time where there is war happening in our world as we speak, funded by, uh, funded by this country. Our tax dollars. Uh, our whoops. tax dollars yeah. have funded are, are funding a current war that is happening, and uh, you can never have too many movies. I think talking about uh, the horrors of war. I think it's a more important film. So I, my pick is All Quiet on the Western Front. Because at the mm -hmm. end of the day, while I agree, everything, everywhere, all at once, and not my favorite movie of this year. I thought it was too long, um, too... Uh, I had problems. I think it's the best it's multiverse movie. But I'm picking All Quiet on the Western Front to win. Um, but I think you could be right. I think it, it, I think everything, everywhere, all at once, just as much chance to win in this. This, But the, the fact that they like just throw... Here's 10 movies. I, I don't like that. I think it should have been five. Um, and the reason they expanded it to 10 is because of the year that The Dark Knight came out. A lot of people felt that The Dark Knight should have been nominated mm -hmm. for Best Picture. So there you go. Those are our picks. Alan, can you share the Google Doc with me when you're done? I'm going to yeah. continue to mic micromanage you with... Uh, I First of all, I hate micromanaging. Like, I hate... First of all, it's more work for me. But... Um, I don't, I don't like it. 